This is Story Robot. Welcome to r slash I don't work here lady. Our first story of today is, this isn't a dog daycare at all. A while back I was working in an office that allowed dogs. It was an open floor plan and since customers never came into the office, we kept the dog's food and water bowls right by the front door just because it was the most convenient space and no one else would see them but us who worked there. Of the six of us who worked in the main office area, I was the only one who didn't have a dog, no pets policy at the apartment and always felt horribly left out. To make matters worse, across the way was a doggy daycare. One day a very frantic woman came in and she had an absolutely massive basset hound with her. Usually the only people who came into the office were associates who had appointments with someone working there, but it was rare they brought their dogs. She ran up to me and said, do you work here? And I said, yes, how can I help you? And she said, I wasn't sure if you took walk-ins but I read online I could just drop him off. I tried to call but no answer. I didn't know what she was talking about at that point and I said, come again. Who did you call exactly? Thinking if I could just saddle her off to whoever she came to see, I wouldn't have to decipher her problem. She said, well, it doesn't matter now. Look, something urgent come up and I really need to leave him here. Here's his food he likes and I'll be back in a few hours and. At this point I wasn't thinking of the doggy daycare. I thought maybe she was a friend of someone here. I said, well all right, can I get your name please? And she said her name and then asked if I needed her to sign anything and I was so confused at this point I just said, why would I need you to sign something? And she left almost immediately. So I took Otis the dog to the back and showed him to my co-workers and no one knew the woman or dog. I was worried she wouldn't come back, but at the same time, my wish for an office dog had been granted. And Otis was supremely chill. All he did all day was lie around and drool onto his own ears. I just freshened him up every now and then, took him out every couple hours, and he was happy as a clam on a big cushy dog bed we thankfully had an extra of. He just loved attention from anywhere he could get it. At the end of the day the woman, thank God, came back. She said, thanks, you're a lifesaver. How was he? And I said, he was a champ. And was about to say, but why is he here, when she said, that's a relief. Most kennels say he gets anxious around other dogs. I heard you operated at a much higher capacity, I was thrilled to see you had so few clients in the room at one time. So, how much do I owe? And that's when I realized she thought we were a dog daycare. Now, I probably should have corrected her. But I loved my day with the office dog and I did want to get paid for supervising this strange dog all day. I just threw out the number that sounded fair and appropriate, that'll be $20, I said. She replied, really, in this very high tone, and I couldn't tell if I'd overshot or undershot but she paid me and left. My co-workers were laughing hysterically when they realized what had happened and we thought it would just be a good story for the future. But the next week, she came back. She said we were so much more affordable and less overcrowded than her other place that she was happy to use us. I was glad for the company so just took him. I didn't think there was any way she couldn't have at least some idea we weren't a dog daycare. The whole ordeal was so strange I just figured, don't question a good thing. I was much younger and dumber then. Not long after, Otis started getting dropped off too, sometimes even three or four days a week. I was in heaven. He was such a love. And he made fast friends with the delivery guys and visitors. One day, we took our office Christmas card photo and Otis was over that day, so we included him. In a Santa hat. It was pretty great. But it turns out Otis his owner was friends with one of our clients, who I guess happened to have the card out on her table or was kind enough to display it alongside her other holiday cards. Because one day, Otis his owner came in holding the card and walked up to me and said, I can't even believe I'm asking this but, is that my dog in this photo? This isn't a dog daycare at all. This is just an office, isn't it? She said it with a note of surprise, as though she was looking around and putting it all together for the first time, no coincidence that this was the first time she wasn't in some crazy rush either. She was like, then who are all these other dogs? And I explained. I was terrified she was going to demand her money back, or worse, take some sort of legal action against us for misrepresenting ourselves as a dog care business, or complain to corporate. Instead she basically said, why didn't you ever say anything? And I explained we just really liked having Otis around. She stopped for a minute and seemed to be thinking and said, is that right? And I said yes and told the story of how I was the only one in the office without a dog so loved the company. She seemed a little flummoxed or hesitant, understandably, because the whole thing was so weird. She turned to my coworker and asked if I was telling the whole truth, I don't know why she thought my coworker, also a stranger to her, was any more trustworthy than me, but hey. Strange times. Coworker backed me up. So she said, well, I wish you'd said something sooner. Could have saved me a lot of embarrassment with my friend back there. Alright, I have to get going. See you at 4pm.
and she left Otis. I couldn't believe it. I said, so he can stay. And she replied, where else could I find someone to watch him one on one all day for $20, and off she went. Otis stayed my office dog, until his family moved away. Luckily right around the same time, I took a new job. Our second story of today is, not taking trash as sexual assault. Some background, I'm a plumber and I'm only 18. I went to a trade school for high school and came out with a full-time job as an apprentice. This happened about 5 months ago and has had me beeped up ever since. I was working in a 4-story building inside the city and there's only one elevator, which we weren't allowed to use cause of the companies that worked in the building itself and then only one spiral square staircase needed for later. My journeyman and I were wrapping up our day and packing up everything. As the younger guy, I was sweeping and taking the loads back down to the truck to get ready to leave and on one of my last trips, I was only taking a trash bag and a few of the hand tools I hadn't grabbed yet. I'm in my normal work clothes but my boss isn't strict about wearing company clothing, so I'm only wearing my Dickies pants and a beat up sweatshirt with no labels. I start walking down the stairs with the trash from the fourth floor to the bottom when a worker networking caller helpline company from the third floor walked out with a trash bag. I briefly walked past just finishing my day when she scoffed at me. Me being the kid I am, turn around and say, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. I didn't mean to bump into you. And continued down and then she said, here take this beep, I got a call I need to get on. I said that I was sorry and I didn't work for the building and it's not my job to take it. So she then exclaims, you're dressed as a janitor. My son is one too. You dress just like him. He has the same tools on him all day. I tried to tell her that I didn't and that I'm a plumber working above her on 4th. In retrospect, yes I could have taken it, but there wasn't one of those giant trash bins to put trash in so we had to take it back to shop to dispose of and we didn't have much room for more in the van. I started to get annoyed, but I just remembered that I need to take breaths and walk away. I start going down the stairs when she grabbed the back of my hoodie and yanked it. I spun around like what the beep, and she slammed the bag into my stomach sending me stumbling down the stairs. This was when one of her co-workers comes out cause of the commotion and she starts fake crying saying I sexually harassed her, and that she shoved me down the stairs in an attempt to save herself. I tried to say something getting up but the guy was on the phone with the cops already and he took her away to calm her down. I started to get so mad at this woman but my co-worker came to me and said everything would be fine. This is when the biggest blessings ever occurred. My buddy loves to mess with me. He'd take videos of me working or being oblivious and he'd throw like coins at me to be funny or dump water on me, just as a joke to lighten the day up a bit. Well he recorded the interaction and the lady never knew he was there. Reason why spiral staircase was important. By the time he made sure I was alright, the cops were there about 10 minutes after the whole thing went down. They talk to the woman and they take her side of things at first. They start questioning me in the stairwell and my buddy said he witnessed it and had a video. He began to show the video to the cop of literally everything. From the moment I began down the stairs and passed this lady to her shoving me down the stairs. He talks to her and from the second he said there was a video she turned ghost white. They took her downstairs to the cruiser and the cop came back to me asking if I needed assistance or ambulance, as I had a gash on my elbow when I stumbled down, but I was totally fine though. Just in complete shock. He also asked if I wanted to press charges and I said I would. In the following time since this happened, I've taken her to court. She's been charged and is serving time for assault and battery and another thing I don't recall. What's important to know as I'm realizing now, is that there were no cameras in the stairwell. I would have been screwed. Absolutely screwed. It was a huge reality check for myself. I could be sitting in jail serving time for something I didn't do at this very moment. It could have have ruined my life to be quite honest. Luckily my buddy was there and ever since then I have never complained once about him messing around with me. Shortly after this, the building installed new cameras everywhere. Being 5 months later, my parents have been awesome in teaching me about all this stuff. Especially since I'm a man and it can get scary with accusations like that. They believed me and I've always been raised by them to treat women right and I'm the kid who wouldn't hurt a fly. Thank you for watch error, error, error. Problem detected. Not enough subscribers. Please subscribe like and comment.